When the 82 year old caretaker of a mobile home park in New Hampshire passed away earlier this year, the local community was surprised to find out that this man who lived incredibly frugally was actually a millionaire. In fact, he left a lot of that money behind for the local community, making him an American hero. Now, the real question is, will the local community squander this opportunity? We'll get to that in just a moment. His name is, or was, I should say, Jeffrey Holt. He lived in Hinsdale, New Hampshire, where he led a very simple life. Residents would see Holt around town in threadbare clothing, riding his lawnmower headed to a convenience <laughs> store, parked along the main road, reading a newspaper or watching cars pass. And he did some odd jobs, but rarely left town. Despite having taught driver's ed to high schoolers, Holt had given up driving a car. He opted for a bicycle instead and finally the mower. His mobile home in the park was mostly empty of furniture, no TV and no computer either. The legs of his bed went through the floor. So clearly he wasn't interested in spending any money on himself and really did live a simple life. A little too simple if you ask me, he should have at least been a little more comfortable, he deserved it. Now his best friend and former employer Edwin Smith said this, he seemed to have what he wanted, but he didn't want much. What an incredible guy, very different from yep. Me and a lot of other people in America. Yeah. Um, but it turns out that secretly Holt was a multimillionaire. And so when he died, he actually gave it all away to his community of 4,200 people. Uh, his will had brief instructions, $3.8 million to the town of Hinsdale to benefit the community in the areas of education, health, recreation, and culture. Earlier in his life, by the way, he worked as a production manager at a grain mill in Vermont. But apparently he also studied financial publications and learned how to invest his money. One of Holt's first investments into a mutual fund was in communications before cell phones ever even existed. And so Holt had confided to his friend Smith, who became the executor of his estates, that his investments were doing better. Than had ever than he, than he had ever expected, and wasn't sure what to do with the money. Um, he has no children, by the way, and so Smith explains here why he thinks Holt saved all his money, and what happened when Holt came to the realization that he was a multimillionaire. Let's watch. He was brought up to be very frugal. Oftentimes, when I was talking to him, he'd make reference to his father. Telling him that he shouldn't spend money, he should be more frugal with his with his money and be careful of how he spent it because it wouldn't last. When Jeff realized that he had a couple million dollars in the bank, he didn't know what he was going to do with it. I I was sort of dumbfounded when I found out that all of it went to the town. I mean, most people would be dumbfounded if they found out. But Steve Diorio, who is the chairperson of the town select board, who'd occasionally wave at Holt from his car, said this. I don't think anyone had any idea that he was that successful. I know he didn't have a whole lot of family, but nonetheless, to leave it to the town where he lived in, it's a tremendous gift. Oh God, it's so devastating that he didn't have much family, like family, I love family, family's everything. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, so first of all, obviously American hero. Mm -hmm. uh, second of all, there's one thing that everybody's getting wrong in the story. They keep saying, despite the fact that he was wealthy, he was frugal. No, it's because he was frugal that he was wealthy. And so he saved all that money and it just compounds and compounds and compounds. He never spent it, all right. so he kept compounding interest or, or gaining value in the stock market. And that's why he had that much money, but having said that, I, you know, I really wonder, and I wish it, that I, you know, I knew him or, or I could talk to someone that did, because if it's one thing that if he was kind of zen about it, like seems hey, like I, he was, yeah, I, I don't need this stuff. It doesn't make me happier, so I don't need to chase it. In which case, that's awesome, and I love that, and way to be happy with what you have, and that's exactly the right zen attitude. The problem is oftentimes desire, like oh, I want that, I want that, whatever's out of touch or out of reach, people want, right? And he clearly didn't suffer from that, so that's great. But if it was just that his dad told him to be frugal and he just didn't realize that his dad isn't exactly right, and he just never spent it, no, <laughs> you could have fun with that money. I'm not saying spend it all, you wanna leave some to the town, that's wonderful and open hearted and generous of you and we love you for it. But 
<laughs> if it was just your cultural programming, no, get a real bed, get a TV and a computer, you'd be amazed what's on Netflix. Okay, so I kind of feel bad that he didn't spend it on himself, but wonderfully generous of him. So now we get to how the town will probably ruin it. <laughs> so look, I, I, I say that because there are already hints that the town is gonna ruin it. So clearly he was, he noted how he wants the money to be spent, right? He wants it to be spent on education. Uh, where's that list again? Um, recreation, culture. Right. Look, I guess it's a little bit vague once you get into recreation and culture, like what does that even mean, right? Mm -hmm. But the town apparently doesn't even know how exactly um, they're going to spend the money. For instance, uh, some residents have proposed upgrading the town hall clock, restoring buildings, <laughs> which is okay. important. Come on. Because it because of the look, they want it to look good. They want it to remind them of the past when the clock was functioning. No one cares about your clock. Well, they care about their clock. Okay, fine. There's a lot worse ways to spend the money. Sure. Um, restoring buildings, which if buildings need to be restored, I think that's a good use of the money. Or maybe buy a new ballot counting machine in honor of Holt, who always made sure to vote. No, I love that. Okay, sure, that's good, that's good. Um, another possibility is setting up an online driver's education course. He liked to teach kids how to drive, perfect. But here's the part that gets to be right. Hillsdale will utilize the money left very frugally as Mr. Holt did. No, but I. So you guys aren't gonna spend the money? <laughs> like, Is anybody ever gonna spend that money? I'll take the money. TYT.com slash join to send the money. <laughs> so, Put some of those kids through college, like use the money to actually improve people's lives. Like get them further in life, help them progress, like do, do that. But Anna, it's actually better than I suspected. Because in the morning meeting when we discussed these stories, um, I, I said, oh boy, not having read the story yet at that point, I said, What'll happen is they'll get the $3.8 million and then they'll rip each other apart trying to figure out how to spend it. I want it, no, I want it. We should spend it on my priority. We should spend it on my priority. But so far, it doesn't look like they're doing that. It looks like they're being, you know, conservative, like meaning frugal, etc. And they're spending on the things that he'd like. If they keep going in this direction, I know you're upset about the clock. <laughs> <laughs> the I just clock, think the clock a is a ridiculous. Like, I love that that's like the first thing that's, oh, we, we can improve the clock in town hall or city hall. Like, Okay. Uh, I don't know, man. This looks like it's a small town in New Hampshire that like if this whole story feels like old America in a good way to me. If you enjoy this video, that's because of our members. They make us independent, they make us strong, and they make us honest. Become a member today by hitting the join button below.